Okay, come on, come on, come on. No, you gotta do something else goofy. Hey gang, thank you for joining us for Two Texas <laughs> Lobsters React. And Miggy's being goofy. But hey, why not have fun? Anyway, thank you so much again for joining us. Uh, today we're going to continue our Napoleon series with Napoleon's Great Blunder, Spain 1808. Without uh, any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into it. In the autumn of 1807, French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte dominated Europe. He had humbled Austria and Prussia and sealed an alliance with Russia. Of the major powers, only Britain still defied him, safe from invasion thanks to its powerful navy. Napoleon had ordered all territory controlled by France or its allies to stop trading with Britain, the so-called Continental System or Blockade designed to wreck Britain's economy and force its government to make peace. But neutral Portugal had continued to trade with its historic ally, Britain. So Napoleon sent an army under General Junot to occupy the country and force it into line. The invasion was supported by France's ally, Spain. Though privately, Napoleon held Spain's rulers in contempt. The Bourbon royal family was decadent and corrupt. The king and crown prince loathed each other. While the country was effectively run by Chief Minister Manuel Godoy, the queen's lover. Spain, <laughs> Napoleon concluded, was backwards, militarily weak and incompetently governed. And he devised a plan to seize control of the country. Hmm. That's quite bold, isn't it? Yeah, it is. In the spring of 1808, under the pretext of guarding Spain against the British, French troops took up strategic positions around the country. <laughs> the Spanish people saw the French military presence as the latest in a long line of humiliations and held Chief Minister Manuel Godoy responsible. Yeah, Spaniards are very uh, proud mm -hmm. people. They've always been very proud yeah. people. I can see that as an insult. I mean, that not only is that terrifying <laughs> if you're if you're looking at this invading army coming through, but also how humiliating for uh, another country, a leader, to come in and say, "Hey, we all know you're stupid, but I've got a smart pill for you." <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. There were riots at the palace of Aranjuez. Godoy was nearly lynched. Napoleon invited the Spanish royal family and Godoy to take refuge in the French city of Bayonne and sent Marshal Murat and 50,000 troops to restore order in Madrid. Wow. Well, that's something, isn't it? And you know what? Uh, so when you and I were planning the trip to Madrid, Spain, and we were looking through all of... We were going to Italy um, and Rome and all that, but we were going to spend some time in Madrid. Mm-hmm. A lot of the influences of the French culture are still there. Yeah. And the buildings and just the way the their food, mm -hmm. just yeah. overall. It's fascinating, isn't it, how mm -hmm. something could be lingering for yeah. that many years after. Yeah. Second of May 1808, the people of Madrid rose up against Murat's soldiers. It became known as the Dos de Mayo Uprising, immortalized by the artist Francisco Goya. This scene shows Mamelukes of Napoleon's Imperial Guard attacked by the citizens of Madrid. Mm. A hundred soldiers were killed. The French responded ruthlessly, shooting down dozens in the streets and executing more than a hundred by firing squad. Meanwhile, in Bayonne, Napoleon forced King Carlos to abdicate and bestowed the title King of Spain on his own brother, Joseph. He really does spread it around the family, doesn't he? He sure does. Wow. I imagine they felt that way, too. Mm -hmm. That summer, as Napoleon forced a new modernizing constitution on Spain, and his brother Joseph entered Madrid as its new king, 
The Spanish reacted with fury. I bet. The French weren't just arrogant foreigners trampling on their national honour. They were godless atheists, who during the French Revolution had rejected the Pope and Catholic Church. Napoleon, priests warned the peasants, was the very Antichrist himself. Revolts erupted across the country. The Spanish army was joined by militias and partisans who attacked French troops and killed collaborators. French they don't soldiers carried out savage reprisals. They don't seem that they were as organized as Prussia mm -mm. or as Russia. No, I it mean, seems more like just what I'm hearing kind of a guerrilla warfare. warfare. Yeah. Uprisings. Mm. Like, uh, what's going I mean, Ukraine has an organized army yeah. and they're beating Russians, but. But also the people stood up against. Yeah. No mercy was shown. The countless atrocities horrified Francisco Goya and led to his famous Disasters of War series. Mm. At mm. first, it seemed the French would easily put down the revolt. Girona, Valencia and Zaragoza were besieged by French troops while the Spanish army of Galicia was routed by Marshal Bessier at the Battle of Medina del Rio Seco. But eight days later, as General Dupont and three French divisions withdrew from Cordoba, slowed down by wagons piled high with loot, they were surrounded at Bailen by General Castaño's army of Andalusia and forced to surrender. The Spanish took 18,000 French prisoners about half of whom later died of starvation. <clears throat> wow. Berlin was a humiliation for France, her first major defeat since Napoleon became emperor. France's enemies across Europe were delighted. Napoleon was incandescent with fury. <laughs> I bet he was. It's hard, to, it's hard to fight and win against a people that love their freedom mm -hmm. and love their culture mm -hmm. and they don't want to give it up these yeah. people had pride and th they were just they were, they were great people they didn't want to be they didn't want to be taken and that's why they whooped the french much like ukraine mm -hmm. the situation went from bad to worse the Portuguese joined the revolt, while fierce Spanish resistance forced the French to abandon the sieges of Valencia, Girona, and Zaragoza. Spain's new king, Joseph Bonaparte, was even forced to flee the capital. <laughs> the British That's assisted something. the revolt, which the Spanish now called a war of independence, by shipping weapons to Spain using the Royal Navy. On the 1st of August, a small British army commanded by Sir Arthur Wellesley landed in Portugal to aid their revolt. On the very, 17th of August... Very similar to what is going on in U Ukraine right now. How the world has stepped in, the West and... Yeah. Uh, war and is war and it, it always goes the same way. It does, doesn't it? There's a lot of similarities yeah. in ex exactly, even, even then, mm -hmm. uh, exactly how it, how it goes yeah. down. He beat a small French force at Rolisa. Then, four days later, beat Junot's main army at the Battle of Vimero. But Wellesley's newly arrived superior, Sir Hugh Dalrymple, then agreed to repatriate Junot and his army to France with all their arms and plunder using British ships. Why would they do that? In Britain, the generous terms were seen as a disgrace and scandal. A subsequent inquiry exonerated Wellesley, the future Duke of Wellington, but Dalrymple never held command again. Hmm. <clears throat> Everywhere where I am absent, they commit nothing but follies. Napoleon responds to the news. Um, you know, I see these pictures of Napoleon. You want to know something? They always portray him as being a very short guy with his little hand in his pocket. Um, he was actually five foot seven, which was that's tall. pretty short. Well, not at the time. He was actually taller than most Frenchmen. Yeah, so still pretty short. Five seven. Well, I'm five eight. <laughs> I mean, 
I'm not much taller than Napoleon. No, you're five nine. Okay, that's why I married her. <laughs> Napoleon decided the only way to sort out the situation in Spain was to go there himself. He assembled 130,000 reinforcements, including many of his best troops, and on the 7th of November led a second invasion of Spain. Most Spanish troops were inexperienced, were often badly equipped and led, and their armies had no coherent strategy. They were no match for the Grande Armée, which burst across the Ebro River and inflicted heavy defeats on the Spanish at Borgos and Tudela. At Tudela, Marshal Land's Third Corps avenged the defeat at Bailin by smashing the army of General Castaños, sending it fleeing in two directions. Wow. Napoleon pushed on rapidly. Any time was of the essence. 8,000 Spanish <clears throat> held the mountain pass at Somosierra. Napoleon, impatient to break through to the capital, ordered forward the Polish Light Horse of the Guard. In an attack of almost suicidal bravery, they charged the Spanish guns head on and enabled the French to take the pass. Four days later, after Napoleon threatened to obliterate the city, Madrid opened its gates to his army. Oh my goodness. Unaware of the disaster engulfing Spanish forces, a 20,000 strong British army, commanded by Sir John Moore, had just arrived in Salamanca after a 300 mile march from Lisbon, with another smaller force en route from Coruña. The British army was inexperienced but, in contrast to most Spanish forces, it was well-trained, organized, and led. As news reached more of the Spanish collapse, he nevertheless planned to divert French forces by attacking Marshal Soult's isolated Second Corps and threatening Napoleon's communications to Burgos and France. At Sargoon on the 21st of December, the British 15th Hussars advanced overnight through winter frost and made a dawn attack on a French cavalry brigade, routing it in one great charge. But as Moore prepared a full-scale attack on Soult's corps, he received news that Napoleon was advancing rapidly towards him with his main army from Madrid. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> He was ruthless. I mean, he, he had to get the job done, He's right? conceited. While two mm. French corps under Marshal be Land began too. a second bloody siege of... Well, I would think... I mean, I would think there would have to be some ego involved for you to... I think when you start to think you you can't win, or you're not the best, then... then victory is not a certainty anymore. Mm-mm. -mm. You can't start to think that you're not absolutely... The bomb. Yeah. Or you're well, going to start... Well, I mean, he had to leave France just to come over to Spain because, like he quoted, basically, I'm the only one that can get it done. Mm -hmm. You know, in so many words. Well, he doesn't seem to be a... He doesn't seem to be a leader that fought from the back lines either. Mm -mm. No. Which is so admirable. Gotha, yeah, Napoleon for sure. saw a chance to get to grips with the British at last, intending to trap Moore between his own forces and Soult's second corps. He force marched his troops over the icy Guadarrama Pass in the midst of a blizzard. Moore, facing odds of more than two to one, immediately ordered a retreat, <laughs> planning to march 250 miles to the coast, where his army could be evacuated by the Royal Navy. 250 miles on foot. For both sides, the race to the sea was an exhausting slog through mountains, mud, and bitter cold. I wonder how many people died from just the journey of that. Many fell by the wayside as British discipline collapsed, leading to looting and drunkenness, except among the rear guard, which fought several skillful delaying actions and kept the French at bay. Soldiers of Britain's elite 95th Rifles were prominent in these skirmishes. 
This specialized light infantry regiment wore green uniforms for better concealment and were one of the few it's units smart. on any side armed with rifles. Unlike the standard smoothbore musket, rifles had spiral grooves in the barrel that spun the bullet as it was fired, hmm. making Rifling. them slower to load, but much more accurate. Wow. Yeah, that's like in today's um, today's bullets or today's barrels have rifling. Mm -hmm. I think it's called rifling. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure. I'm sure you will. Um, <laughs> but and that's how when crimes are committed, they'll take the bullet and they'll match it to the barrel of the gun they believe yeah. was. And that's how they. It's much more accurate. Injury incident during Moore's retreat at Cacabelos. Rifleman Tom Plunkett picked out and shot dead a French general at 400 yards. Some say further. Wow, gosh. Thanks to the skill of the rear guard and the desperate pace were. of the retreat, the British mm -hmm. kept one step ahead of the French. On New Year's Eve, Napoleon received grave news from Paris. Rumors of plots and Austria mobilizing once more for war. The emperor immediately left for France, taking many of his best troops with him and entrusted Marshal Soult and Second Corps with finishing off the British. The pursuit continued, but on the 11th of January, 1809, Moore's ragged army reached Coruña. For Sir John Moore's exhausted army, the Spanish port meant supplies, rest, and the prospect of rescue. <laughs> but few ships were there to meet them on the 11th. Fortunately, the British had been able to blow up bridges behind them to delay Marshal Soult's advance. And three days later, on the 14th of January, the naval transports arrived, allowing Moore to begin embarking his cavalry and artillery. But the very next day, Soult's army appeared on the hills <laughs> south of Coruña. God, they don't give up, Taking do they? up mm -hmm. positions on the heights of Peñasquedo, where he sighted his main battery of cannon. Half of Moore's army deployed in a defensive line two miles south of the city, with two divisions held back to protect his right flank. Both Smart. armies were roughly 16,000 strong. The French had four regiments of dragoons, while the British cavalry was already aboard ship. But the broken terrain of walls, hedges and olive trees made it a battlefield ill-suited to cavalry. Soult's plan was to attack the British right flank and trap Moore's army against the sea. Around 2 p.m. the French artillery opened fire. Then Mermet's infantry division advanced, supported by La Housse's dragoons on his left. Moore had been unsure if Soult would attack and had just ordered Paget's division to begin embarkation. Now he hurriedly cancelled that order ordering Paget instead to bring up his men to reinforce his open flank, and Fraser's division to take up position on the heights of Santa Margarita. The French advanced through hedges and over walls, with heavy firing from skirmishers on both sides. Then the British counterattacked. The 42nd Highlanders and 50th Foot charged into the village of Elvinia, and drove the French out. But in confused fighting, they in turn were soon pushed back to their own lines. Sir John Moore was close to the front line, observing developments, urging on officers and men. But as he ordered up the Guards Brigade to reinforce the line, he was hit in the shoulder by a cannonball. Oh. Oh. He remained conscious but it was obvious the wound was fatal. Good he was carried back to the city. Soult sent forward Merle's division to support the attack on Elvinia. Scottish General Sir John Hope had taken over command of the British army from the dying moor, and he ordered forward two battalions of infantry to meet the French attack. Paget's division, led by skirmishers of the 95th Rifles, arrived to shore up the British right flank. The terrain was so bad for horses that French dragoons chose to dismount and fight on foot, I bet. but were slowly pushed back by the British. 
Hmm. Paget's advance threatened the flank of Mermet's attack on Elvinia, and he too was forced to withdraw, while an attack on the right by Delaborde's infantry secured a foothold in the village of Piedra Longa, but got bogged down in heavy skirmishing. Around 6pm, dusk fell, and firing died out across the battlefield. News that the British line had held reached Moore shortly before he died in Coruña, around 8pm. That night, the British lit campfires and posted sentries, then silently withdrew to Coruña to begin <laughs> embarkation. Yeah, I don't blame him. The next morning, the French found the enemy positions abandoned, but they were slow to take advantage. It wasn't until noon that they were able to bring up six cannon and get them into position so overlooking the Bay of Coruña. <laughs> the British had almost completed their evacuation by the time the French guns opened fire. In a hurried departure, a few British transports ran aground and two were set on fire, but overall, losses were light. A small Spanish garrison held Coruña waiting until the British fleet had escaped <clears throat> to sea, before surrendering. Oh, wow. What? Now that's a movie I'd like to see. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. So they like held everybody off, and then they surrendered. Yeah. And were probably killed. Yeah. <sighs> Whether Moore's retreat to Coruña wow. was a British disaster, or miraculous escape, is still debated. I mean, it was pointless. They all and left. Did he what abandon the Spain? They just went over there. Well, to I get mean, the British killed. came over to <laughs> help Spain, right? It's Spain. It's Spain. It's their country. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, they did. But they all just left in the middle of the night. They yeah. just abandoned them. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Wow, that's a movie sad. I'd like to see. I know. It'd be a sad Spain, one. It's hour of need. Or draw off Napoleon's main force buying time for others. Either way, Britain's only army had been saved and would return to fight another day, while Napoleon now faced the prospect of a long war on the Iberian Peninsula mm. and renewed conflict with Austria, a war on two fronts that would challenge his empire like never before. Napoleon had blundered in Spain but it was years before the scale of his mistake was evident. Then he would say, I embarked pretty badly on this affair, I admit it. The immorality showed too obviously. The injustice was too cynical. The whole of it remains very mm. ugly. If you'd like to learn yeah, more about that the was amazing. War, <laughs> I liked that one. Yeah, that, that one was, was interesting. Sure. Wow, that was good. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Please put down in the comments below what you thought of the video. If you have anything to add or you'd like to see anything special, just let us know. Just comment to say hello. We love that too. All right, we'll see you later. See ya.